Hello and welcome everyone. So recently I've been thinking about getting into ubiquity networking devices. Uh, I was looking at like the extra information you get about your network, the central control, the deep packet inspection at three and a half gigabits per second, the fancy dashboards, and all that stuff was just too much for me to pass up on. Uh, currently, the obvious choice for starting that was to get uh, a UDM Pro as my main router. I was trying to keep the cost down, so I didn't want to buy a bunch of other unified devices such as access points and switches until I'm sure I want to migrate all the network, all the home network that I have here to Ubiquiti. Uh, I wanted to use my existing ACES wireless router uh, as an access point and connect it to the UDM Pro. I also had a third-party switch, a QNAP switch, that I wanted to connect to the UDM Pro as well. So the problem was I couldn't find enough information online about how uh, the UDM Pro might behave if you pair it with non-Ubiquiti devices. That's why I ended up buying the UDM Pro and like trying this for myself. Uh, and I'm also creating this video to like answer the questions that other people might have, which are similar to mine. So in order for you to understand uh, how my network is set up here uh, and how I managed to like fit in the UDM Pro, I created this a simple graph. As you can see at the top, uh, this is a fairly simple home network setup that you can imagine. So there's this ISP modem that I have, which feeds my wireless ACES router, which is in uh, AX86U. Uh, and alongside that, I also have a QNAP switch, a two and a half gigabit QNAP switch uh, that kind of powers uh, all my devices that are capable of two and a half gig, which are two PCs and one NAS device. So when you introduce a UDM Pro, the only change that you make to this setup is basically you want to make your uh, wireless router, you want to make it a simple access point. So what I did was that I put this into the access point operation mode, so it no longer does the routing and it only acts as an access point. And that is connected to my UDM Pro right now. And I still have my switch connected to the UDM Pro as well. So this is the current setup that I have. With this setup in mind, I will now show you what you will have access to and what will work as expected in the Unify controller, what you will miss out on because you are using some like third-party devices, and I will also go over some weirdness that I've experienced using the Unify controller. I'm not sure if that's because I'm using third-party devices or if it's like a general weirdness that happens inside the controller. But those are the things that I will talk about uh, in this video. Uh, so I won't talk about how to set up a UDM device because there are a lot of uh, videos out there that you can go and watch. Okay, so we're starting with the main dashboard that you get out of Unify Controller. So you have everything that you expect here. So you're getting like the downlink uplink of your uh, UDM Pro. And here you can see all your like information about your IPs and stuff like that. And then at the bottom, you see all the connected devices and different applications that are being used like in your network. One thing you may notice here is that at the bottom here, I don't have any graphs related to wireless networks. Uh, and that is expected because I'm not using any Unify access points. So it cannot give me like those detailed informations and graphs about my Wi-Fi experience. Uh, and that kind of brings me to the first thing I want to talk about. So the first thing you will lose when you use a setup like mine is if you go to the client section and look at all the connected clients, you can see that all of them are showing up as connected to LAN, which is not the case for my physical network. But the problem here is uh, my access point is directly connected to the UDM Pro via an Ethernet cable. And there is no way for the UDM Pro to understand that the Wi-Fi clients are connected to that access point. So the way it sees the information is that everything is connected to the same LAN port. So as you can see here, all the devices show up as connected to LAN. And that is one of the main problems that you will have.
To build up on that, one main thing that you can do using a unified controller is creating different network uh, networks inside uh, your environment. And then you can create different Wi-Fi networks and assign one of those predefined networks to that Wi-Fi network. And that is something that you will lose as well. You cannot have that. You can create a Wi-Fi network here. You can like put in any SSID that you want and password and like configure it however you want. But there is no way to assign that to an access point because you don't have an access point that the UDM Pro recognizes as an access point. As you can see here, there is nothing in this list that I can select. So that is one of the main disadvantages of the setup. You don't have like the distinction between wireless clients and wired clients. But that's a problem that I can live with, at least for now. Another thing you will miss out on, obviously, is that you will get this like very flat network topology. So the way you see the devices connected here, that's not the case for my network. So for example, this like TV uh, or this like MacBook Pro and like this like iPad, they are all connected to the Wi-Fi signal of the ACES access point. But as you can see here, they are all shown as like this flat network that are like directly connected to the UDM Pro, which is basically the same thing as I discussed before, but you also see that in the topology page as well. So as you can guess by now, uh, anything that's related to your Wi-Fi experience could not be controlled via the unified controller. You don't have access to the data that needs to be provided by other unified devices such as access points and switches. And that essentially means that you have no control over the Wi-Fi from the unified controller. You cannot create multiple SSIDs, you cannot create guest hotspots, uh, you cannot use like advanced features like Wi-Fi AI and stuff like that. So the way that I set this up right now is that I configure my SSID and Wi-Fi networks through my ACES uh, dashboard, basically. So what I do there is, let me show you that. I will log into the panel. There we go. As mentioned before, I have set up this device to act only as an access point and not a router anymore. Uh, so this is how I set that up. And also in the wireless section, this is where you actually configure your SSID and your Wi-Fi network. So right now here I have a 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, network with the same SSID. And basically you need to do all your configurations inside this panel, inside the panel of your access point, which is completely separate from your Unify network. Obviously that kind of defeats one of the purposes that you would want to move to a Unify network, which is the central control via the Unify controller. You kind of lose a part of that functionality. But as I said before, I look at this as like a transitional period. So I will move to like uh, Unify access points in the future. But at the moment for like keeping the costs down and like trying to understand how Unify works and how everything is set up, uh, I wanted to do this and then like move to a whole Unify setup. Another feature that you will kind of miss is like the VLAN configuration. So for example, if I want to create a new network, let's say for my IoT devices, I can actually create that network and assign a VLAN ID to it. Uh, but the problem with that is that I cannot assign that VLAN ID and that network to a Wi-Fi network. So let's say if I want all my IoT devices to be connected to a specific SSID with a specific VLAN ID assigned to it, I cannot do that. I can only assign these VLAN IDs uh, to the Ethernet ports of the UDM Pro itself. So for example, right now, the access point, the ACES access point is connected to the UDM Pro. I can assign a VLAN ID to that port, but then that essentially means anything that is connected to my access point would be on the same VLAN. So I cannot distinguish between my normal devices like my phones and my tablets and IoT devices like my Google Home and stuff like that. So that is something else that you will lose. Now on to the things that you will have access to, things that would work yeah, as you would expect it. Uh, basically anything related to your router functionality of the UDM Pro. 
that would still work for example you can create like vpns or you can create like different networks and you can set it up however you like inside the udm pro or uh, you also have access to like the threat management. You can see whatever happens inside all of your devices in your network. Uh, the problems, the, the dangerous things that might come into your network and stuff like that. So these are all powered by the deep packet inspection, uh, which works as, as expected. Uh, also, you have access to like your statistics. So all the traffic that goes through your network you can have access to that information uh, what applications layers are being used the most what clients are using which and stuff like that so you have full access to all those information and also as mentioned before you have access to all the clients that are connected to your network whether they're wireless or wired uh, you actually see them all in the clients tab and you can do whatever you normally do with a client inside the unified controller so you can have configuration you can give them names aliases you can assign network uh, ips to them uh, instead of like having manual ips on the devices you can ask the dhcp server of the unified controller to assign a specific id to a specific device but that kind of brings me to some of the weirdness I talked about in the beginning so this was one of it so I started assigning some of my devices like static IPs from the DHCP side so right here you can actually say okay assign uh, a fixed IP to this device and that works in some cases but not in all for example I assigned it to my uh, to my access point the ACES one and it started acting weird I don't know if there was a problem with my setup or if this is a problem with the ACES device or anything like that, but uh, it didn't take effect uh, for a long, long time. So I ended up like assigning that a specific IP address in the uh, ACES panel itself. The same thing happened for my, I have a network card that I share between two different PCs and the same thing happened here. So I cannot assign uh, a static IP address here to this device. When I do that, I still see the previous IP address assigned via DHCP to that device. So that was one thing. The other thing is the downlink and uplink that you can see here for each client. It doesn't really work. It works in some cases. Sometimes it works with a like big delay, but for most for the most part, it doesn't work. So just to give you an example, if I run a speed test on this machine right here. So what the speed test does is essentially downloads a bunch of data for a short period of time. So when this starts working, I should be able to see that here. So this is the interface that is connected and getting that information. As you can see, I cannot see that downlink here. I see it in the dashboard. So here, I actually see that in the dashboard that like the whole router is, is down, uh, downloading a bunch of data, but I don't see that uh, in the client section. And the same thing goes for upload. So right now I'm uploading, but I cannot see any of that reflected here. As I said before, I'm not sure if this is a problem with having third-party devices or if this is a problem with Unified Controller itself. But what I found is that this is very unreliable. Sometimes it actually works. Right now it's fixed at zero uh, bits per second, but sometimes it actually works and shows some values, but those values are never accurate. And at the end, I think it's worth mentioning that I am currently on the controller version 6.1.70. And for my uh, UDM Pro firmware, I am on 1.9.2. So some of the issues that I mentioned might be fixed in the future releases because this panel that you see here is, is fairly new. So you can go to the settings and actually turn off the new user interface and it would fall back to what Unify previously had, which is similar, but also different in some senses. Um, so yeah, maybe some of these issues are things with the new interface and will be fixed in the future, but I think only time will tell. 
So I think that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. So these are the things that you will get and you will not get when you actually mix and match your Unify UDM Pro with uh, third-party devices. And it is working like more or less the same as I expected. I didn't expect for everything to work. Uh, but it's good to know that you can actually set up a network without having a Unify access point. And that kind of decreases the barrier to entry for a system like Unify, because if, if you have a business, then I think it's okay for you to spend this much money on, on your networking setup. But if you are, if you want to just upgrade your home network, like the cost factor is pretty important because just to get started, you need to like pay uh, 380 for the UDM Pro and then you have to pay like 150 for the access point and then you need a switch and stuff like that so it all adds up so it's great to know that you can actually start your unified journey uh, with just the cost for the UDM Pro and then build on top of that as time goes by and that is a pl plan I have right now so that is it. That's all I wanted to share today. So please let me know if there are any other questions or if anything that I missed and feel free to post your comments and everything. I'm not a YouTuber as you probably already know looking at the channel. So I only created this uh, video because it was a question that I had and I managed to answer a lot of them after I bought the uh, UDM Pro. So I thought I would share with everyone else. So that's pretty much it. So thank you very much everybody and Cheers.